Hey, we're going to do an integration by parts problem here. It's going to be the integral of e raised to the theta times the sine theta d theta. And I do this one um, the long way because it's a little bit different than the other ones we've seen. So if I can remind you of the ones we did in examples before, um, we had um, the integral of theta times something, and that theta was our u. And very quickly, when we took a derivative of that, oops, we took a derivative of that, the theta went away. So the du was 1. So very quickly when we start building this thing, the derivatives of u cause the variable to drop out. Same thing with another example we did. It was the integral of 4x times something. Well, we let 4x be our u, and then du was 4. And so again, the x uh, went away. The last example I think I did was the integral of uh, x squared plus x plus 1, and that was times something else. But the x squared plus x plus 1 was our u, and du the first time was 2x plus 1, and then we had to do it again, and then basically the second derivative was 2, so eventually taking that derivative caused the x to go away. And we could do examples where we have much higher powers and it takes a little while for that x to go away, but it would disappear if you kept taking derivatives and repeating the process. So the problem here with the problem we're about to do, to do the um, integration of x to the theta times sine of uh, theta um, is that e to the theta, no matter how many times you integrate or take the derivative, is still e to the theta. Now, there could be a coefficient in that um, exponent to cause some changes, but it, e to the theta is still going to be there in some form. And the sine of theta, that's just going to flip-flop between sine and cosine if you do integrals or derivatives. So no matter which one you pick for u or dv, these two things are still going to kind of stay around. They're not going to go away altogether. So let's see what happens when we do this. So I'm just going to go with um, e being my u and sine of theta being my dv. So if that's the case, e to the theta is u, then du is still e to the theta. Um, dv is the sine of theta d theta. So integrate sine, we get negative cosine of theta. So let's build on to this. So we will have uh, u times v. So that will be e to the theta times a negative cosine of theta. So that's my um, u times v. And it will be minus the integral of v, which is negative cosine of theta, um, times du, which will be e theta d theta. Okay. So taking a look at that, we see that it doesn't really go away. Let's rewrite it and clean it up just a little bit. So we will have minus e to the theta cosine theta. I'm just bringing that down plus the integral of e theta cosine theta d theta. So we're going to use integration by parts again. So I'm going to let e to the theta, we're supposed to change colors here, be u and cosine theta d theta b dv. So let's see here. We will have, if we do that, u is e to the theta, so du is still e to the theta, dv is cosine theta d theta, so then integrate that, the v will be uh, sine of theta d theta, so I'm going to put that back together. I'm going to pull everything down. Negative e to the theta, cosine theta is a part I've already had, plus the new um, u times v, so that would be, excuse me, I don't need that d theta on that last part, sorry, putting it in the wrong place. But it would be plus uh, u times v, so that would be e to the theta, sine theta, and then it will be minus the integral of v du, I'm just going to rewrite a little bit differently, e to the theta, sine theta d theta. So I'm still running in a loop here. So next time I do this, I'll end up with some type of e to the theta, cosine theta. Um, but let's kind of compare this to what we've got. So we've still got an integral on the right-hand side, but let's look at the other side. 
we started with the theta, excuse me, the integral of e to the theta sine theta d theta. So as we're integrating that, we've got a little equation here. It may seem a little bit weird to do this, but we have an equation. We have what we started with, an integral equal to what it's going to be integrated into. The thing to notice here is that we have the integral of e theta sine theta over on the left, and we have the integral of e theta sine theta over on the right. So we're going to treat this just like an equation. So it is possible that if we um, had stuff that didn't go away, sooner or later we might have the original integral or a multiple of it show back up. So if there was something in front of the theta, either in front of the, excuse me, inside the sine function or in the exponent for the e to the theta, if there were um, coefficients up there, um, either through chain rule or u substitution, we'd start getting coefficients in front of our integral, and that'd be fine. But we're going to add this integral to both sides. So we're going to add the integral of e to the theta sine theta d theta to both sides. Okay, and when we do that, it will leave the right-hand side, and over on the left-hand side we will have two integrals. So remember, if there was a coefficient, we could have something else hanging out there, but it'll be two of the integral of e to the theta uh, sine theta d theta and that will be equal to the other side where we have um, negative e to the theta cosine theta plus e to the theta sine theta and I never put it out here because I was waiting until I was done to put all of it together but there's a plus c so moving down just a little bit, we will have our final answer here because we need to get rid of this two in front of the integral because the original thing we were trying to do is figure out what the integral of e to the theta sine theta was. But we've got twice that, so we're going to divide everything by two. So we will have our original statement, which was the integral of e to the theta sine theta d theta equals negative one half e to the theta cosine theta plus one half e to the theta sine theta and then plus one half c but since c is an unknown constant we don't care what half of it is we'll just still call it c so what we did was we found the original integral in our integration process. Um, and this can generally happen if uh, either one of the parts is not going to disappear, if the variable is not going to uh, cancel out through um, taking a derivative over and over. Um, so usually if you have some combination of these functions, uh, whether it's two trig functions together or um, an exponential and a trig function, usually you're going to have something like this because no matter how many times you mess with u, um, you're not going to get rid of the variable in that term. All right, thank you.